Hello, my name is Aviva, and about 10 minutes ago, I decided that I wanted to do a reread of From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armitrout. So it's currently Thursday, March 10th at about 4.30 p.m. I was trying to pick out a new book. I'm like, I don't really know what I'm in the mood of reading. And then I very randomly remembered that in exactly one week from today, the new release for this series is coming out, book four. I think it's called like A Way of Kings, A War of Two Kings. I don't even know, but it's coming out in exactly a week. I have it pre-ordered, and I remembered that I don't remember anything about this series. Like, I remember a a little bit like I remember you know the romance and a few like big details about the series but at the end of the day the world building specifically is very like you know gone for my brain and I really should update myself before we jump into the fourth book so um I've decided that I wanted to vlog this experience because I feel like you know I needed this so other people might need it too and not everybody might have you know the time or is even interested in doing a reread of this series so I'm gonna do it for you and I'm gonna make this vlog very you know let's update us on what happened in the first three books so I don't know how long this vlog is gonna be I really didn't like pre think about this very much but I'm gonna start with book one then I'll move on to book two and three. We'll see if I can fit it all into one vlog. If I can't, then I'll just do like a part one, part two, part three. We'll see how it goes. But my point is, is that I want to just like, you know, update everybody as to what is going on in this world as I read through it just so that like you know I guess a summary that's it. I just want to make a summary that's all I really want to do I don't really want to review this book because I'm a little bit nervous that because I'm doing a reread of it the second time around I'm going to be a little bit more critical and I might not enjoy it as the first time I read it but the first time that I did read this series which was almost a year ago I absolutely loved it like I really died for it the first time I was like this is very much like Akhtar book two very much reminded me of A Court of Mist and Fury and I just remember having good feelings towards this series but throughout the past year I have seen a lot of like more negative things about Jennifer L. Armitrout and then I read you know a site what was it called uh something the, the the prequel to this series I read that and I really didn't like it I really wasn't a fan and then it kind of like turned me off from this world a little bit but I already have book four pre-ordered so I kind of want to read it and I remember enjoying the series so I want to get myself back into it and be excited for the new release so I'm not going to make this video very like you know um reaction based of like oh my god I loved this moment maybe I will who we'll see my point is that I really want to just like you know give you guys a quick summary of what's going on in this series before we start book four. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start this book tonight. I will try updating you guys as much as I can with as many important details as I can pinpoint as I go along. But we'll see how this goes because I'm only human. So anyway, I'll update you guys when I have something else to share. The next day. Hello, it is now Friday and last night I got to page 187 slash chapter 12 and I decided that I'm going to be doing this vlog as more of like a chapter by chapter quick recap because I was trying to see like, oh, how can I like, you know, summarize it as I keep going along and I realized that it's going to be a little bit complicated to do that for me personally because like I'm not a professional summary person, you know, so instead what I did was as I got from chapter to chapter, I wrote down quick notes of the main things that happened in that chapter and then I'm just gonna go through it with you every little bit when like we get to a big breaking point you know because I kind of know the big breaking points in the story already because I've read it before the thing is that I'm trying to take myself out of my reread so that I don't start mixing up things that I know are gonna happen in the future so that you guys can get like a perfect you know vibe of like oh if you would have read it this would be like the process of how you would have learned stuff you know what I mean so instead we're gonna go chapter by chapter I'm gonna update you about stuff as I learn learn them sort of thing you know in this round of reading and we're gonna you know summarize it that way I feel like it will be kind of good also for you because if you wanted to get a little bit more information on specific stuff you'll at least have a chapter you can reference instead of like well in the first 200 pages all of this happened you know what I mean so basically we start off with chapter one with a little bit of world building we find out that we are in this city of Macedonia which is in the kingdom of Solus and 400 years ago there was this war of two kings that basically split up this kingdom and now the ascenders rule the kingdom of Solus, but the atlanteans used to rule it so now the atlanteans are considered the fallen kingdom and they have this prince castile who is also known as the dark one and they also have all these descenders who are basically rebels who you know believe that the atlanteans are the ones that should rule and they're always trying to like you know take down the ascenders and stuff along those lines so the ascenders are basically people who like if you ascend you 
basically, you know, get to live a very, very long life. There's stuff that we're going to figure out as we keep going along. But for now, all we know is that the ascenders, they're very old people. Let's say you ascend when you're 19, you stay 19 forever. And then we also find out that Poppy, the main character, she is the chosen one. She is the maiden. We get to meet her and we get to find out that when she ascends in one year, when she turns 19, she is going to be given to the God. She is going to be helping everybody ascend somehow, but she doesn't really know much about the process, what's going to happen, everything along those lines. And she doesn't really like to be the chosen one because it gives her a very secluded life. She can't really talk to anybody. She can't see anybody. She has to be like separated from society. She wears this veal where nobody could even see who she is. She's always in white and it's, it's just a very secluded, you know, like suffocating sort of life. And therefore she rebels. She doesn't really want to be the chosen one. You know what I mean? So basically we start off chapter one where we see her sneak out of the castle and go to the red pearl, which is basically a brothel. And, you know, she gets to see people playing poker. She gets to see people like dancing seductively, things along those lines. And happens to be if somebody walks into the brothel who happens to be Victor, who is her guard. She looks at him as like a father because he's been her guard for like a very long time. He is the person that like taught her to fight, who gave her her first dagger when she was 16 because he believes that you know, she should really like, um, you know, know how to defend herself because she is the maiden and people are always after her and trying to kill her. That's the reason she's actually in Macedonia. She used to be, you know, living in Macedonia, which is the capital where everybody goes when they are ready to ascend. She used to be the queen's favorite, everything along those lines. But, you know, she was in a lot of danger. So they put her in like this little city, Macedonia. Anyway, Victor walks in and she gets really scared. She's like, oh my God, how am I going to get out of here without him seeing me? Because I'm not supposed to be here. So this girl, tells her to go upstairs to this room and hide. So she basically goes there and then she bumps into Hawk. And then in chapter two, we basically get Poppy and Hawk's first kiss, yada, yada, yada. And then in chapter three, we meet Kieran, who basically disrupts Hawk and Poppy having their little moment in the room. And then, you know, Hawk is basically like, wait for me, I'm going to come back, but I have to leave with Kieran right now. And she's like, sure. But obviously she doesn't listen. So at the end of chapter three, we go back to the castle and we basically meet Tawny for the first time, which is kind of Poppy's only friend. But Tawny also works for like the Duke and the Duchess and she's supposed to ascend when she's 19. So like it's this whole thing of like, oh, I don't 100% trust Tawny, but also she's the only person I'm allowed to talk to. She's actually allowed to see my face. So like we're kind of friends, but it's a weird relationship. You know what I mean? So basically Poppy tells Tawny where she was, that she went to the Red Pearl, but she doesn't tell her that she had that kiss with Hawk because she's afraid to get in trouble. So then we jump to chapter four and we basically meet a cursed for the first time. And we find out that Victor and Poppy do this very treasonous thing where they go and they help the curse die with dignity. So you basically turn into a curse if you are bit by a craven, which is kind of like a rabid vampire sort of thing. And supposedly the craven were created by the Atlanteans. So the Atlanteans are basically, you know, being said that, you know, they make craven and the craven are what haunt the mist. And if you're out on duty or you come across Cross a craven for some reason and you get bitten, you turn into a cursed. And if you're not killed within the first 48 hours, you'll therefore then turn into a craven. So you don't want that to happen because you're basically like losing yourself. So people die with dignity and Victor and Poppy basically help them secretly kill themselves either by like, you know, a wooden, um, you know, stake to the heart from the blood forest, or you have to like have a bloodstone, something along those lines. If it's early enough when you know you're cursed, then maybe you could get like, you know, burnt alive at the stake, but basically you have to get your head chopped off or you have to get a stake to the heart to die. So we get to see that scene of Poppy and Victor basically helping a cursed die with dignity. And then in chapter five, we get to meet Rylan, which is Poppy's other personal guard. So they're about to go for a walk and then they bump into Lord Mazine, which is an ascended. And he happens to be very good friends with the Duke, who happens to very much like physically and verbally abusing Poppy as a form of punishment. So the Lord always like sits in on these sessions of sorts and therefore Poppy very much does not like the Lord. He tries cornering her, but then they get interrupted by a scream. So in chapter six, we get to see the first dead body and it's very weird weird crime scene. There's two puncture marks in the girl's neck. There's no blood. Her skirt is ran up. It looks like she was violated. And basically everybody wants to basically blame this on the descendant, saying that a descendant snuck into the castle, did this trying to stir up trouble. But Poppy and Victor happen to think that this was actually done by an Atlantean. So that's when we get a little bit more information as to what the hell is actually up with an Atlantean. So we find out that Atlanteans have two things that are very similar to the Craven, but a little bit smaller. We also find out 
that they age very, very slowly, a little bit different than the Ascended because the Ascended stop aging when they do ascend. But Atlanteans, they basically hit this like maturity spot and then they start aging very, very slowly. They're also known to be extremely strong, possibly even stronger than the Ascended. So there's something to be very scared of. Also, you'll never know if you're in the company of one of the Atlanteans because they look like normal people. We also get a quick glimpse of like the Wolven. So the Wolven are people who are humans, but could also turn into wolves. They're part of like the Atlantean cultures, where they're basically werewolves, you know what I mean? And basically there's this thing that they can be bonded, bounded, I don't know what it's called, but they can be bounded with an Atlantean. So a wolven and an Atlantean will bound each other and then the wolven will be duty bound to that Atlantean for life. So we get a quick glimpse of that. And then after that little info dump of sorts, we basically get to see Poppy and Ryland walk through the garden like they do all the time. And we end chapter six where Ryland gets shot. So then we move into chapter seven and basically Ryland's killer tries kidnapping Poppy. Poppy basically like, you know, tries defending herself and then the killer ends up running off. And then in chapter eight, we actually meet Hawk again when we're at Ryland's funeral. So Poppy goes to Ryland's funeral to pay her respects. She's with Victor, but Victor has has to go and you know pay his own respects so hawk basically steps in and it takes care of poppy while victor has to step away for a minute so that's our second glimpse at hawk and then in chapter nine we get a little bit more of an info dump we get a, we find out that basically like you know the ascendant don't walk in the sun and either do their gods we also get like a full page of who all the gods are if you want to look it up it was on page 156 but it was a very nice list of like the gods names and what they're gods of and stuff like that so then we move on to chapter 10 and we find find out that Hawk is going to be Poppy's new personal guard. And then in chapter 11, we get to see the moment where Hawk is going to see Poppy's face for the first time because, you know, he's going to be around her all the time. So he is one of the few people who get to see her. But Poppy's actually really nervous to show her face off because she has this really horrible scar on her face that she got like when she was a kid, when her parents were murdered. And basically the Duke and Duchess are always saying how ugly she is. And like, you know, they're always being mean to her about it. So anyway, she very slowly like takes off her thing. She looks at Hawk and Hawk says, as both halves are as beautiful as the whole, which was so sweet. And then anyway, you know, we move on and Poppy and Tanya are now back in her rooms and they're talking and Tanya's so excited, you know, that Hawk is going to be around now. And Poppy's really nervous because, you know, he, I, she doesn't know like if he's going to remember like that she is the person that like he met at the Red Pearl. So she basically like finally tells Tanya what actually happened when she went to the Red Pearl and saying how like, you know, she's a little nervous that she's going to get in trouble because of it. And that is basically where I left off. But I did forget to say this whole time that we did get to see a little bit here and there about how Poppy actually has these special powers where she can feel other people's emotions. Like she could just like, I don't know, like look at somebody and like feel what they're feeling sort of stuff. And she can even like take away people's pain when she wants to. So I think that is the wrap up of the first 187 pages of this book. So I'm going to keep reading and I will update you guys soon. Three hours later. So I'm officially about halfway through the book. I just got to chapter 23 and we're about to start the right scene. So I have to update you guys on what I know so far because I know that so much is about to change and I have to get this out before I continue. So we left off with chapter 12 and the ladies are all chatting. They're gossiping. We heard about Miss Willa's diary for the first time. And then all of a sudden, Poppy gets summoned to go to the Duke. So Hawk walks her over there. They have the staircase scene. Poppy finally like actually says some words to Hawk because she was trying not to before because she was worried that he'd find out who she was. And then anyway, he drops her off at the Duke. And then in chapter 13, we basically have the very abusive scene with the Duke and the Lord where, you know, they whip her and they verbally abuse her, everything along those lines. And we get a little bit of a hint that the Ascended have zero feelings because like, you know, the Duke touched Poppy at one point and she didn't feel anything. So that was like, you know, a little bit information hinting sort of thing. Then anyway, chapter 14, we move on and the abuse is over and Victor basically picks her up from the Duke's office and he basically says how like oh you should just try to behave more instead of like oh let me help you like he was very much like oh I know what's going on except like you know you should just try and be better so that you don't have to go to any of the Duke's lessons anymore and I'm just like that is like a really bad way for like somebody who considers her like her daughter to like you know act about like you know the fact that like this girl is being abused but whatever right anyway we move on to chapter 15 15. And that is when, you know, the city starts to get attacked by the craven. And then Hawk basically 
finds out that Bryce went all the way to the rise to try and like, you know, help protect the city. And then they have their whole battle of like, oh, I'm going to fight you. I got to run away, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and then we move on to chapter 16. They're still on the rise. They're bantering a little bit. And then Boppy basically finds out that Hawk really did know who she was like this entire time. And then we end chapter 16 where she goes back to her room and then Hawk shows up at her room. And then in chapter 17, they basically have like, you know, an entire conversation just about like a bunch of random stuff. And Poppy ends up sharing the story of how she got her scars and what happened to her parents, how her parents were trying to like flee the capital. And then they ended up getting like attacked by the Cravens and then her parents died. And she woke up a couple of days later with all of these scars and she was back in the capital and the queen was like taking care of her. And like, that's how her whole maiden chosen one story started. And that's how she got her scars, you know? And then Hawk basically admits that he helps people die with dignity as well. So they have this like, you know, treasonous thing that they're connected with by the end of that chapter. Then we move on to chapter 18. And it was the moment where like the Duke was giving the speech about like, you know, how unhappy the gods are because like, you know, everybody's misbehaving and how we have descenders in our midst. And like, you know, we just got attacked and you guys just have to like be better and you have to be okay with the right, etc., etc. Like the Duke was just like rambling on about like really weird things. And anyway, we got this moment where Poppy started to feel things other than pain. So we noticed that her um, her powers were starting to escalate and it was like getting very intense and stuff like that. And then that chapter ended where like one of the descenders like jumps out of the crowd and yells, you do nothing to protect us while you hide in your castles behind your guards. You do nothing but steal children in the name of false gods. Where are the third and fourth sons and daughters? Where are they really? And then in chapter nine, we start to see Poppy questioning like everything that's actually going on around her, like Hawks starts like pinpoints a couple of really good points and Poppy's like yeah I don't know maybe I kind of agree with you like everything doesn't really feel right you know what I mean and then anyway the next day Poppy ends up going to the Duchess and asking about her gifts because she's like she the, the Duchess knows that she has this gifts but she can't talk to anybody else about it so the Duchess the Duchess basically says like oh it's normal that you know um your gifts are maturing because you're about getting you're about to ascend you know what i mean and then we get this little glimpse of like the previous maiden and the duchess basically says how um the first maiden had these gifts as well. And the only thing that we really do know about her is that she was killed by the Dark One. We don't know her name. We don't know where she's from. We don't know anything about her except that, you know, she was killed by the Dark One. So then we move into chapter 20. And in chapter 20, it was very info dumpy about the history of Solus because Poppy was actually like in one of those classes with the priestess. So she had to read through like their history books. So we actually got to learn a lot. So we learned that the Atlanteans rose to power by dreaming drinking thousands of people's blood and the ones that they didn't kill are the ones that became the Cravens. And then Nikodos, the king of kings or the god, the king of the gods, that's what he is. Nikodos, the king of the gods, gave his blessing to the human army, which turned them powerful and strong. And then they were able to overtake the Atlanteans. And that basically ended the Atlanteans reign and the start of the ascended sort of thing, you know? And then Poppy basically starts to question her history and, you know, she starts to like be like, well, the Atlanteans and the um, Ascended, they sound like they are very, very similar, except that one drank the blood of the gods and one drank the blood of the humans. And then like, you know, she basically got in trouble that like she said that because she's like, she shouldn't be questioning anything. You know what I mean? And then that chapter ends where Hawk and Poppy go for a walk and we found out that Hawk has a brother. And then in chapter 21, Poppy basically sneaks out of the castle and she goes to like the library where she could read some of Miss Willa's diaries and she overhears a conversation that the Duke is having with a guard about how they caught the descender that was at the, you know, the rally that the Duke was doing like a couple of chapters before and that the Duke wants to now question him and that he's obviously like going to kill him and stuff. And and um, uh, Poppy, she was hiding on the windowsill, like she was hiding like, um, you know, outside the window because she didn't want to get caught. And then once the Duke leave, Hawk basically comes in and is like, get down from there. And then they have like a whole conversation. They talk about Miss Willa's book and yada, yada, yada stuff happens there. And then in chapter 22, they end up um, basically heading to the right. So that's where I ended off. Like, you know, they basically talk about Miss Willa's diary and then, you know, that scene ends and then Poppy goes back to the, you know, palace she gets ready she's in this red dress she never really gets to wear red so she's all self-conscious and then we head to the right 
the next day. Oh my God. Okay, so last night I finished this and I have so much I have to update you guys on. I knew it was gonna happen, but there is a lot of information that you need to know. So I am not even gonna pretend that I can remember all this and just like stare straight at you. I have my notes right in front of me and we're just gonna go from chapter to chapter and I'm gonna share with you everything I need to share with you. But this is gonna take a little bit of time. So I'm sorry that this video is so freaking long, but you gotta know what you gotta know. You know what I mean? So anyway, we left off yesterday with the right. So what Poppy headed to the right with Tawny and the right is basically when all of the you know people of the kingdom of souls give their children over to the ascenders as an offering to the gods like you know it's just part of their um, society and this is the ceremony when all of these children are going to leave their families so when we're there, the Lord ends up coming up to Poppy and, you know, he smells like Jasmine. So Poppy starts to like put some stuff together that is he the person that killed that girl at the beginning of the book? Because she smelled Jasmine at the crime scene and now she's smelling Jasmine on the Lord and she's just like piecing some stuff together. But anyway, Tawny wants to go and hang out with her friend. So Poppy's like, don't worry about it. I'm going to go back to my rooms with Hawk. So Hawk and Poppy end up leaving the right because there's nothing for her to do there because she can't talk to anybody or socialize or anything like that. So they end up taking a walk back and they end up heading into the garden instead of back to her rooms. So then in chapter 24, they basically just like talk a little bit. They have some good conversation. Hawk shares about, you know, his brother and his friend that they used to go to the cave all the time. And ever since something happened to his brother, he can't really bring himself to go back to that place. So that's why they should go into the gardens to try and, you know, get over the fact that Rylan was killed there. Let's go make some new good memories. So Poppy agrees to this and then they head into the willow tree. So in chapter 25, they basically have that little makeout scene under the tree. And then Hawk is a very good gentleman and he stops it before it gets too far. So then they head back to her rooms and on their way there, they end up running into Victor and Victor and Hawk get into a fight. Victor ends up, you know, dismissing Hawk and Victor ends up taking Poppy and walking her back. But before they get back to her rooms, they run into the Duke's dead body. He has been murdered and the cane that he used to like whip Poppy with is like smack jabbed through his chest so you know uh karma happened you know what i mean <laughs> i was trying to think of the word but anyway that was the end of chapter 25. So in chapter 26, they basically end up getting attacked by the Descenders and the Atlanteans. A mob breaks out. Everybody's getting trampled. Everybody's getting pulled apart from each other. And then Poppy and then the Duchess and the Lord and a couple of guards end up like rushing into like a side room. But the Descenders find them and then Poppy starts to fight back. And even though like the Duchess and the Lord are looking on and they don't know that she could fight. So she ends up like, you know, getting into the fight and then happens to be Victor ends up dying which was so freaking sad and then hawk shows up tries to console poppy but poppy flips out and ends up murdering the lord so that was the end of um chapter 26 so in chapter 27 we kind of like jump a week and we see that poppy was kind of like out of it for the past week they were like sedating her she hasn't really talked to anybody she's kind of like in shock and then we find out that she has been summoned to the capital so then in chapter 28, they're packing up, getting ready to leave. We find out that Tawny can't come with her. She's going to have to leave them behind. And then, you know, they're getting on their horses. And that is when we meet Karen, who is one of the guards that's going to be coming along for this journey. So then let's move to chapter 29. Poppy is now riding on the same horse as Hawk. And Hawk shows her that he brought Miss Willa's diary with them. And then we end that chapter where they get to the blood force. And it's littered in like, you know, craven bones, human bones, animal bones. It's a very freaky place. And they have have to make camp there for the night. So then in chapter 30, Poppy is absolutely freezing. So Hawk lays down with her. They end up having like a conversation, really heart to heart of like how Poppy's very unhappy. She doesn't want to be the maiden. She wishes that she had a different life, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end of that chapter, chapter 30, Hawk helps her fall asleep by easing some tension and getting her off. So chapter 30, if you wanted to look that up. Anyway, in chapter 31, we move on. It's the next day and they end up getting attacked by some craven while they're still in the forest. One of the guards ends up dying and Poppy uses her gift to try and, um, you know, like ease his pain. But one of the guards and Hawk was looking on while she did this and they noticed and he's like, oh my God, it's true. You have the gift. Like the, the, the other guard said that. And then in chapter 32, we move on and they finally arrive at the Haven Keep and the town starts acting really weird. Like Poppy's like, what the hell is going on? Like they're all coming out of their houses, acting as if royalty just arrived. 
arrived and she's starting to like you know get some suspicions of like what is going on like things are starting to not make sense like hawk just like leaves her with these people and like she's like why do you trust them like you know you're my guard like what if there's descenders around and like he knows everybody's names it's, it's being very suspicious you know but anyway, later that night, Hawk ends up coming into, you know, her rooms after they've eaten, they've cleaned up, and she tells him all about her gift, like, that she can basically, like, feel emotions and make other people's pain go away, give other people specific, you know, emotions if she wants to. And if you want to look more into this, it's actually on page 472. It's a full explanation of how it works and everything that she currently knows about her powers. But basically, they have that conversation, they get it out of the way, and then in chapter 33, Poppy basically asks him to stay the night with her. So she undresses, she shows him all of her scars, and like, you know, she mentions how this is why I'm the chosen one, because I survived a craven attack. And he ends up taking her virginity in that scene. So, you know, chapter 33, if you want her to look it up. And at the end of that chapter, he asks her to promise him that she won't forget that this was real. So then we move on to chapter 34. It's the next morning, and Philip, one of Poppy's guards, ends up coming to her and telling her about how this place is really strange and everything is very off, and like he's a little bit worried so he tries to get her to leave with him but they end up running into Karen and that's when we find out that Karen is a woven because the, he, he turns and tries to stop them so they end up running away and that's when we end up running into a bunch of other woven including the one that killed Rylan his name was Jericho and then you know there's a fighting scene blah 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 and at the end of it Hawk shows up and ends up killing Philip and Poppy's other guards so then in chapter 35 is when Poppy figures out that she's been tricked and Hawk and everybody around her is actually against the Ascendant and they're all like, you know, Dark One supporters and Descenders. And then she had always thought that the Wolven were extinct, but obviously they're not extinct because there's a bunch of them right in front of her. And this is when she finds out that Hawk has set up everything from the very beginning just to get her. She realizes that Hawk is an Atlantean and she starts to piece together a few things that we had slowly seen throughout the book that I didn't point out to at the time because I knew that this was happening, but I didn't want to like you know say anything before you know it really happened so I'm gonna like you know backtrack really quickly so she in this moment realizes all of these quick things about how you know we've gotten hints that Hawk had elongated teeth because when they first kissed at the red pearl she had felt them and then it's also been mentioned that he is older than he seems like throughout this book there was a couple of moments when he would say something and Poppy would think in her head about how he sounds so much older and wiser than his years and like how he's lived dozens of years longer than he looks like he's lived like we saw that like two or three times throughout the book when they were having conversations so you know pinpointing as to how he's older than he seems he also has like a better sense of hearing than regular humans and we saw this when the ladies in waiting were like you know doing all of their gossiping and hawk overheard them and we also saw this when they were going into like you know the willow tree and he's like don't worry i'll hear if anybody's coming and she's like well how would you have been able to hear you know and then we also noticed how you know he has better eyesight than you know normal people because he was able to see the benches and poppy when they were under the willow tree and it was like very very dark and then we saw multiple moments where he was able to move faster than a normal human and Poppy kept thinking like oh he moved as fast as like an ascendant like how did he do that how did he get here so quickly so all of those little moments were like very foreshadowed throughout the book and at this very moment in chapter 35 Poppy basically pieces it all together and then she basically gives up and they end up locking her up in a dungeon and then at the end of that chapter Hawk shows up so in chapter 36 was a very big info dump and we basically had to hear Hawk's side of the story first he admits that he was the one who killed the Duke and then he explains his side of history and how Poppy has it wrong so we get into a lot of information if you wanted to like read this entire chapter because it is a lot it was in chapter 36 but I have a lot of notes to share with you guys and I think I got like you know the most important pieces but anyway it starts off with how King Malik fell in love with a mortal named Isbeth. He was known to be very unfaithful and one of his lovers ended up hurting her. So he ended up committing the forbidden act of ascending her because he didn't want her to die. So Isabeth was actually the first ascended, not the king and queen that Poppy thought was the first ascended and actually rules all of the king of Solas, but Isabeth. And then she was considered the first vampire because ascended are known to be vampires where he is from. So the king 
ended up drinking her blood until she was almost dead and then shared his blood with her. And that is what an ascension is, a fine line between immortality and creating a monster, which is the craven. So then we also find out a little bit about the culling, which is when the Atlanteans change. So, you know, the ascended, they have to almost die and then be brought back to life with Atlantean blood. But the culling is just when Atlanteans basically hit maturity. And that is when, you know, they get long life, they get their fangs, like they get all of their special powers. It just happens naturally for them. And we find out that Hawk is actually over 200 years old. And we also find out that the Ascended, they lied about why they don't go out in the sun. We had originally thought that they don't go out in the sun to, you know, honor the gods because the gods can't go out in the sun. But actually, if they go out in the sun, they're going to die. And then we also hear how they have to drink the blood of the humans and they have to do it very often. And Ascended actually have, you know, a problem with it. And sometimes they get bloodlust. And in, uh, you know, comparison, Atlanteans need blood, but not as often. And when they do drink, they just drink from other Atlanteans. And we also find out that Atlanteans blood has healing powers and that's actually you know part of the process of how they're able to make an ascended because you almost kill somebody and then Atlantean blood brings you back to life versus a vampire can't make any um new ascended people because their blood doesn't have that power they can only make cravens so then we also you know we go back into the history of it and we find out that after King Malik did this other people started doing it also and it kind of got really out of hand and then you know the Atlanteans tried to put a stop to it but but all the vampires revolted and that was actually the start of the war of two kings so malik ended up being overthrown the vampires took over anointed their own king and queen and they scrubbed the truth from history and they made up their own and that is when they convinced everybody to hand over their children so that they could actually feed on them with the geese that they were actually honoring the god so that was the start of the right and why the right it actually takes place because vampires slash the ascended need humans to feed off of so then um, we also find out that Hawk was actually held captive for over five decades to help with their ascension because they needed an Atlantean to help make more ascended. So Hawk was actually like, you know, their guinea pig of sorts. And that is when we find out as to why Hawk needed Poppy. And it's because they want to swap her for the person that took Hawk's place when they came and saved Hawk from the ascended. So they plan to use Poppy as, you know, a a trading person because Poppy is, you know, the queen's favorite. And um, then we move on to chapter 37. So I know that was a lot of information. I hope you, you know, follow it along. But basically, Poppy sits and tries to make sense of everything. And that is when Delano and Niall, I hope I'm saying their name right, end up coming to escort her to a more comfortable room. And when they're moving, Jericho, you know, tries to stop them. And he's with a bunch of descenders. And then, you know, they basically end up having a fight. And throughout this fight, Poppy ends up getting stabbed. So then in chapter 38, Hawk ends up coming and forcing um poppy to drink his blood because you know he could heal with his blood and um he doesn't want poppy to die so he forces her to drink it because she kind of doesn't want to then she ends up getting like a little high on his blood. It's kind of like a drug. It makes her very horny. She tries to like, you know, get with Hawk, but he stops her. He's like, you are going to regret this if we go through with this. And I am not that big of a dick. And um, then it finally like clicks into place at the end of this chapter that Hawk is actually Prince Castile because Kieran says something like, oh, Cass. And then she's like, wait, Castile, you're an Atlantean. And then everything clicks into place for her that basically Hawk is Prince Castile slash the dark one. So she flips shit and ends up stabbing him in the heart at the end of that scene so then <laughs> such a good scene i absolutely love how violent she is but anyway in chapter 39 she ends up running into the woods he catches her and then he ends up drinking from her neck and then they end up having sex in the woods on the floor in the snow <laughs> So that was um, chapter 39, if you want to go and look that up for yourself. But anyway, at the end of that, they end up having a very healthy, communicative conversation. And Castile basically says how he's going to bring her home to Atlantis. So then we move into chapter 40. And Kieran basically tells Poppy that Atlantia, did I say Atlantis? I think it's just Atlantia. But anyway, Castile at the end of that chapter says he's going to bring her home. And then in chapter 40, um, Kieran and Poppy end up having a conversation when they're in her rooms. 
And he tells her how Atlantia is on the other side of the Skodos Mountain, past the magical mist that makes anyone who tries to get through them want to turn around. And Poppy always thought that there was nothing behind the Skodos Mountains and that Atlantia no longer existed. But obviously she was wrong and the Ascended just were lying to everybody for a very long time. So um, at the end of that chapter... Poppy ends up taking a bath and dozes off. So Kieran comes in and makes sure that she's not dead. And then that is when we get the first hint that Kieran is very possibly bonded to Castile. I, I forgot how it happened, but basically we get the vibe that Kieran is Castile's woven bounded partner sort of thing you know and Kieran obviously sees her in the bath she's naked we have a little moment over there and then we move into the last chapter which was chapter 41 and Castile comes and escorts Poppy to dinner and we find out that everybody that had attacked her like Jericho and like that whole group of people are like you know dead and hanging on the wall because you know no one was supposed to touch Poppy and this is Castile's way of getting revenge and um they end up sitting down for dinner and Castile ends up telling Poppy that she is actually part Atlantean and that he finally realized this when he tasted her blood and that is why she's the chosen one because they wanted to use her to help um, ascend more people because she has Atlantean blood in her and um, then at the end of the chapter he basically tells her that Atlanteans need to be on home soil to marry and that is why they're going home so that they can get married and then the book freaking ends. So, oh my God, that was a lot of freaking information. My foot, I was like sitting in such a weird way and now my foot is like half asleep. Oh my God, I'm dying. But basically, we finished this book. It was really good. In my opinion, I like, I very much enjoyed it. I was really worried that it wouldn't hit the same way because like I read this a year ago. Sometimes like rereads are not as good the second time around, but to be very honest with you, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. So I will be moving on to book two today and I'm going to be starting another vlog for it. I'm going to keep going with the chapter by chapter recap. So if you wanted to, you know, hear about book two, then make sure to check my channel. It will either be up in a couple of days if you're seeing this the day that this vlog came out, or if you're here after the fact, then it's probably up. But anyway, um, if you enjoyed watching this video, if you really liked the chapter by chapter recap, which I hope was very helpful, I did this guys for you because hopefully, you know, some people will find this very useful. Then, you know, make sure to give this video a like, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I would very much appreciate it. And anyway, thank you for watching. And until next time, enjoy reading.